Hi there, I'm Buddha, and you're watching Dr. Guitar, a show for all you guitarists out there. In today's episode, I'm talking about my experience as supporting B.B. King's daughter. Her name is Shirley King, and whenever she comes to Europe to play, Buddha Power Blues is her band. So my band is her supporting band. We play with her, we play her songs, her set list, whatever she wants. It's a blues show, so there are some skills involved. But mainly, I'm here to talk to you about the experience, but also the skills you need to have to do that kind of task. So mainly, the main difference for me as a musician and as a performer is that I need to be in the role of a supporting artist and not of the artist. So I'm supporting Shirley King's act. I'm supporting B.B. King's daughter act. So I'm there to help her do her thing, her show. People are there to see and watch and hear Shirley King performing, not Buddha Power Blues. How y'all feeling tonight? How y'all feeling? Are you ready for Shirley King? Say yeah! But people who know my band plays behind Shirley King also expect a certain level of us. And mostly, mainly, most of all, I expect that level for myself and for my band. So we are at the highest level we can possibly be. We are trying and struggling to be the best act humanly possible. What I'm saying, it's not that we are the best band in the world, I'm saying we are making the extra mile to be the best band in the world, to try to be it. So we're, we're making a huge effort to be at our best. What happens with Shirley King is that there are a lot of challenges in that show. Mainly, Shirley King is a performer, so she improvises a lot, she really jams a lot, and not directly in a musical sense. So she asks us to, to be quieter or to be louder. She asks us to stop. She goes and talks to the audience. There's a lot of things that you can predict. You just can't, you just have to be prepared. So the thing we set on, since Buddha Power Blues, I used to play with my signals, with my tips for stopping and for endings and etc. What we, we arranged was Shirley tips me and I click the band. I'll, I look at the band, I give them the signal and we do what we know we have to do. We also rehearsed intros and endings for the songs and riffs so that the songs have their own identity, a thing that is really difficult to do in the blues, and especially that happens a lot of times, mostly, most than it should, is that people don't have songs. They 
they are playing the 12 bar blues all over and they are playing the same blues all night long and that is boring that is to me one of the reasons why blues sometimes struggles to get an audience because it's boring if you make it be boring so what we try to do and what we do we make a huge effort to do is to get signature riffs signature musical parts for each song original blues are like that so we give each song its own identity meaning if i'm playing the riff for rock me baby i'm playing the riff i'm not changing and playing the riff for got my mojo working on top of that or for sweet home chicago <laughs> I'm playing, I'm sticking to that riff and I'm making that song be about that riff while Shirley's singing and talking to the audience. The bass, Carl's Mi Carl Minman, also does the same thing. Nico on the drums also does the same thing, so he has a signature groove for that song. You need to know the blues cliches, the blues stuff, so you can put on those songs. You need to know the endings, you need to know you won't be doing the same ending all over the tom da 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 ba da. Otherwise, all the songs will end the same. So we made different endings for each song. We also made different intros for each song, so we can do different different uh, vibes, so the songs sound different. It's simple. It's so simple, it sometimes makes me angry not seeing people do it more often. With Shirley King, a thing we really need to is to be able to adapt fast. She changes things on the run every time, constantly. She doesn't have a plan B, she doesn't have a plan A. <laughs> For 
for example, in this leg, in this in this tour where she came in lately, uh, she came on stage and said, "Do you guys know that the song I'd rather go blind? I've seen you perform that song. Uh, can we do a special arrangement? It's the same harmony as in Tennessee Whiskey from Chris Stapleton, and we learned the song right there. And then, uh, if you could sing the back vocals on the chorus, it would be great. And we had to." arrange an harmony, a real fast harmony, learn the lyrics, and we're playing in one hour. So that skill is very important. Be able to adapt fast to that reality, not be the guy who only adds difficulties to the show. You need to be able to adapt and to serve the artists you're supporting. And this is one of the reasons of this episode, is to try to convey to you some ideas of what it is to support an artist. In this case, I'm supporting the greatest bluesman daughter, but I could be supporting an unknown artist. If I'm being hired to support an, any artist, I'm there to support him, not to conflict with him, not to be arguing with him and whatever he says. And this applies to anything. If, if, you're, if you're hired to be a guitar player for a, for a singer, for a band, whatever, if you're in the band, be the guy that makes it easy, not the guy that makes it difficult. That's a very important skill. Also, a great thing Shirley always talks about having Buddha Power Blues backing her up is that we all sing. So she not only has three musicians, bass, guitar and drums, she also has three backing vocals singing along her. So we help a lot singing. Come on and rock me, baby. In our case, I think we sing okay, especially me. I'm very used to sing as a leader, leading vocal. But even if you don't sing incredibly well, backing vocals can be very supportive. You just have to know where to put your vocal and how to defend yourself. You don't have to be an incredible singer to do backing vocals. Sometimes backing is just on the back, on the background, it's just supporting. It's just helping the audience sing the, the chorus. It's just helping the chorus be bigger. You're just helping. You're not having a huge role. So try to sing. Every one of you should try to sing something and try to be the backing vocal. It helps a lot. And it's another skill set that you have. It's another reason for people to hire you. Another very important thing about this act is keeping the groove. As I told you, we, we try to make the song about the song. So we, we're trying to give each song its own identity. And the groove is one of the most important things. So sometimes we're playing, for example, Help Me. And Shirley is out of stage talking to the audience. And she's out there for 45 minutes. I'm not kidding. 45 minutes in a song. And we're there supporting the ting it get ting it ting it And we're there always keeping the groove. We're not changing the groove. We're maintaining the groove. The blues and every African descendant music is all about the groove and repetition. It's that thing, the funk music, uh, R&B, even hip hop and rap. They are all about repetition and keeping the groove going on. So if you keep the groove, the song has more strength, more strength, each time you play it. I think the best example of that is Manish Boy by Muddy Waters. It's one riff going on forever, but it's building up, it's building tension, it's making you feel more into the groove. So it's it's great. It's it's uh it's one thing I really love about 
blues and funk and soul music is that repetition keeping you on the groove, keeping you on the beat. If it's a slow blues, keep the slow going on. If it, if it is a boogie, keep the boogie going on. And make it all about the groove. Make your part be about the groove. Just keep in mind, if you are a bass player, if you are a guitar player, I, I could really generalize this to any instrument, but whatever you play, keep in mind you're a drummer, you're a groove player, you have to play the rhythm. That's the most important thing in music. It's, it's the thing that everyone really understands. Well, for this tour, for my rig, I chose to go with one amp and a very small pedal board because I, I always do that when I don't know what I will play, when I don't, when I don't have a, a really well-prepared show in the meaning of I have all the arrangements happening as I predicted. I knew we were jamming a lot. I knew Shirley would change things on the road. So I needed to have a very simple pedal board, a very simple tone palette, but a very versatile tone palette. So I brought my Blues Experience pedal board, which is a small Metro 16, yeah, Metro 16, pedal train Metro 16, with a tuner, of course, my Hudson Electronics Broadcast, which has two different drives. So it has the main, the first drive and then a fuzzier drive. The ODR Mini, Noble's ODR Mini, for a second option of tone and boost or an alternative drive. Then the Walrus Audio ARP 87, a delay that I can use as a slapback, which I did uh, always. I, I didn't change the, the delay for anything else. And the Strymon Flint reverb and tremolo that's that's it simple effective all those pedals react greatly to the guitar's volume so i took my nags of course which has the out of phase option which has the option of using the neck and the bridge pickup so my next chop tank and it is part of me so i can do whatever i feel to do in any given moment i can really jam and i have all the tools with me Unfortunately, I brought my Super Thunderbolt thinking it would be loud enough. It isn't. That's a problem with my Super amps. It's not a problem. It's a, it's a characteristic. So Super amps compress really early and don't have a lot of headroom. So whenever you need to turn them loud, you, would, you are just making, it, making them distort more. That's the problem with those amps. That's why I always use two, the, the Thunderbolt and the Tremel Verb. And when you use two, you get immediately twice as loud and you get twice as more headroom. So uh, I'm using the, um, the two amps to get stereo, to get its two speakers playing, its two power amps playing. So I'm using the amps quite low. And that early compression of those amps really makes my tone beautiful. I love it. I love it because they are compressing. They are already in the zone and not too loud. But for this gigs with Shirley King, I wish I could have brought my Super Reverb or my Bassman because I needed a little more volume and a little less distortion. And what was happening is that I was plugging into the, the Thunderbolt. I even plugged into the low input so it compresses a little less and it, it's a little cleaner let's say it like that, but it was compressing a lot. And I usually use this guitar cable, the lava coil, the lava retro coil, lava cables, which compresses the tone a little bit, takes a little off the, the brightness of your guitar and gives it a little bump in the, in the mid range. Yes, cables have a sound. I'll do an episode on cables for sure. Please let me know if that's a thing you're interested in, but I'll do it for sure because cables have a, a huge impact on your tone. What I did to get a little more headroom was to use the Ultramafic lava cable, which is a very high end cable, very, when I mean high end, not high end in treble, high end in quality. So it's a very neutral cable. It doesn't affect your tone at all, and it keeps all the guitar in, in there, so it doesn't take off the, the bite of the guitar. And it was exactly what I was needing 
I was needing the bite of the guitar because I, I was losing it by the, the amp's compression. So it gave me a little more help. The tone was incredible, but I was not playing comfortable. That's just what I mean. But it was two incredible gigs. We're doing a little more uh, in, a, in a short time. And it's always a pleasure to play with Shirley King. You're playing with a, with a legend's daughter. So she carries the legacy of B.B. King. And we talk a lot about the blues scene in the early days. We talk a lot about what it meant uh, for them to play the blues. She has it printed in her DNA, and she's a very, very funny person to be with, very amusing person to be with. It was incredible. It was a great, great moment. It always is. Well, that's it. I hope this has been helpful to you. I hope you have liked the show. If you haven't done it yet, please subscribe the YouTube channel and share it with the world. I've also opened my reverb.com store so if you want to buy something from there you're helping me a little by giving me uh, a little profit on the products i represent some brands special brands for guitar players i also have there other things like cds and and other products but it's just a way of you to help the channel if you are interested in guitar lessons via skype I'm also doing that, so please send me a message via Instagram or Facebook, and we'll keep in touch from there. Make it happen. So thank you so much. We'll see each other next week. Bye-bye.